In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to make the bowling pin that you see here. Shapes like this can actually be pretty complex to make, but I'll show you a method that makes it a lot easier. I'm going to start by moving this out of the way. I'm going to create a circle, so I'm going to click on the circle tool here. and. I'll make a circle about this big and I'm going to turn the stroke off. So I'll go down to the bottom here on this black stroke color, right click it and say remove stroke and then I'll click on the selection button here. I want to make the size of the circle here 70 pixels by 70 pixels. So I can go up here to the width and set that to 70 and for the height, I'll also set that for 70. I'm going to be creating a series of five circles or ellipses with these dimensions that I have listed here. So after the first one here, I'll just click Control D to duplicate this. And then I'll set its dimensions to 52 pixels by 130. And then I'm going to repeat this for all three of these other dimensions that I have listed here. And I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and do that real quick. Okay, so now I have all five of my circles and ellipses. And now I'm going to align them on top of each other. And I'll kind of move these into place and it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be using the alignment tool later to make corrections. Okay, so now I'm going to go up to the object menu and click on the Align and Distribute selection. And that brings up an alignment dialog box. And I have this bottom ellipse already selected, so I'm going to hold the Shift key and click on this one, and then this one, this one, and this one until they're all selected. And then I'll come over here to Alignment and I'll press on this button right here to center all of these vertically. I'm using all of these ellipses here as a template. For this to work, I need to be able to snap to the edges of these ellipses. In order to use snapping, I need to go up and make sure that I have it enabled. So I can go up to the File menu and click on Document Properties. And on the Snap tab, I need to set this snap only when closer than settings selected. And I've got mine set to a distance of 20. And then I'll close this. And then I'll go over to the File menu and click on Inkscape Preferences. And then I'll scroll down to the snapping selection here and click on that. And I need to make sure that I have Enable Snap Indicator selected. I'll go ahead and close this. And then the Snap toolbar is over here on the right, and it's these buttons right here. And if you don't have those displayed on your Inkscape, you can go over to the View menu and click on Show Hide and make sure that the Snap Controls bar is selected. Okay, over here on the Snap Control bars, I need to make sure that I have this top button selected, which enables snapping. And then I need to make sure that I have this button selected, which snaps the nodes or handles. Then I need to make sure that I have this button selected, which is the snap to cusp nodes. Now I can select the Bezier tool over here. And I need to make sure that I have the mode set to this button right here and the shape should be set to none. And now I can go up to the top of this circle right here and I should see an X appear where it wants to snap to the top of this circle. So I'm going to go ahead and left click here and then I'll come down to the left side of this circle 
which I should also see an X appear. So that means I can snap to this point. And then I'll do the same to this circle. And then the same right here. Again, a click to the left side of this one. And then this one. And then I'll go over to the right side and click here and here and here. And again right here right there and then I'll go back to the starting point and click right there. Then next I want to go over here and click on the nodes button. And now I can see all of the nodes for the shape that I just created. And my cursor has also changed to a thin pointer. So I want to go up to the top left and then press the left mouse button and hold the left mouse button and then drag down here to enclose all of these nodes and then lift up on the left mouse button and that will select all of these nodes. Then I'm going to go up to this button right here which is used to make all of the nodes smooth and I'm going to press that so you can see that it has smoothed out all of our nodes and we have a shape that looks like a bowling pin now. I don't need snapping anymore so I'm going to go over here and click this button to turn it off. And I'm going to make one small change to these nodes here. So I'm going to click on this node right here. And then I'm going to press and hold the mouse button. And I'm going to pull this down just a little bit. Now I'll click on the selection button here. And I'll pull this off to the side now. So this is my basic shape. And the next thing I'm going to do is set its color and I'm going to choose a dark brown and I'm going to turn the stroke off so I'll come down here and right click on the stroke color and say remove stroke and now I want to apply a little bit of a blur to this so I'm going to go up to the object menu and select fill and stroke to open up the dialog box for that and right here on Blur, I'm going to go ahead and set this to 1. And then I'm going to duplicate this by pressing Control D. And my duplicate, I don't want any blur for that, so I'm going to turn the blur off and change its color to white. And then I'm going to shrink it just a little bit. So I'll go up to the Path menu and select inset and now I want to apply a gradient to this so I'll press the gradient button and I'm going to select a radial gradient and I'll press and hold the mouse button and then I'll just size these until I get the gradient that I want then I'll go back over and press the selection button to select this and press control D again to make a duplicate of that and I'm gonna hit the gradient button and on this center here I'm gonna drag that down so now I have a gradient that's on top of my other gradient and I'm going to make some adjustments here And then I'll click on the selection button again. And with this gradient that I just made, I want it to be a little bit more intense. And so I'm going to press Control D again and duplicate that. And now I've got the look that I want. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a couple of red stripes to this. So I'll go over here to the square tool and I'll draw a rectangle and I'm going to set its color to red and I'll go over to the selection button click that and I want to set its height to about 20 pixels and then I want to position this about here and then I'm going to press control D to make a second one and I'll just drag that one down and now I'm going to click on the bowling pin and press Control D to make a duplicate 
and I'm going to change this color to red and then with this still selected I'm going to press and hold the shift key while I click on this bottom stripe here so now both of those are selected and I'll go up to the path menu and select intersection and then I'm going to click on the bowling pin again press control D change this color to red again and with this still selected I'll press and hold the shift key while I click on the second stripe and again go to the path menu and select intersection and now I have my two stripes and now while this top stripe is still selected I'm going to hold the shift key and click on the bottom stripe so that they will both be selected together and then I'm going to select the gradient button down here and come up here and select linear gradient and then I'm going to put my cursor in the middle of this red section hold down the left mouse button and drag to the left and while I have this blue dot here selected I'll go down and I'll click on the black color and that'll change the left side of this gradient to a black color and then I'll just adjust these two handles here until I get the effect that I want and that looks good so now I want to add some shine to the bowling pin so I'm going to go over and click on the circle button and I'm going to draw an ellipse and I want to set its size to 55 pixels by 60 pixels so I'm going to click on the selection button and then I'll type in a width of 55 and a height of 60 and then I want to change the color of this to white and then I'll just position this in the center of the bowling pin and then I'll go down and click on the gradient button and starting in the middle of this circle here I'll press and hold the left mouse button and drag this down to about there then I'll click on this center square handle here and drag it up to the left so this added a little bit of shine to the top of the bowling pin and next I'm going to select the Bezier tool by pressing this button and then I'm going to click and release my left mouse button here and then come down to about this spot here and click and release again and then back up to the starting point and I'll click there and then I'm going to go over to the node button press that and then I should have my cursor again that's a thin pointer and I'll position it right on top of this line until I see a little hand and then I'll press and hold the left mouse button and drag this over to the left and then I'll select this line right here and I'll drag that over about right there and then I'm going to come down and change the color of this to white and remove the stroke by right clicking on the stroke color here and select remove stroke and then I'm going to add a gradient so I'll click on the gradient button and in the center of this white area I'll press and hold the left mouse button and drag this down and then I'll select the square handle and drag that up and now I have my completed bowling pin using this template like we did with snapping turned on along with the Bezier tool is a good way to get nice curved lines that are symmetrical on both the left and the right side well thanks for watching and please subscribe and leave a comment